So welcome to Skill Explore live webinar series. So we'll be discussing about the main syllabus and the weightage of the subjects today. So, um, so let me start. Uh, first itself, what we have to, uh, what we have, the key point before start, starting to study for this UDPA exam, that is Urban Planning and Development Authority and Municipality and Black Class is that we have to study smart and not hard. As given in the first slide itself, we have to study smart and not hard. The thing is, the syllabus is actually a vast syllabus, but we need not study the every nooks and corners of that syllabus. That is, we need not study the derivation part and all those theory parts and all those completely we need not, not study. We have to identify the highlighted areas of these. That is, in which area the repeated questions asked. That we have to understand first. And then we have to start. And in that case, we have to come under the concept behind each of those areas that we have to understand and then what are the what are all the important formulae if, if at all if it is a problematic area then uh, what all formulae are there in that next thing we have to understand is the main point point is that where all the repeated questions are asked what all are the repeated questions and uh, the previous year question papers we have to solve so more and more on the questions we are solving the uh, it is more easy to crack the examination that is the key point so we need not be hard with all those things and all we have to uh, first form a timetable or else we have to first form a schedule in which area we have to stress more in which for which subject we have to give our energy more that we have to understand first then we have to start so that is the point we start in uh, preparation of the exam so since, uh, uh, Okay, Skill Explorer is an interactive online tutoring platform where experts provide customized UPDA MMB exam preparation course to cutter engineers over the internet to crack UPDA MMUP exam in first attempt with success formula. So what we are doing is we actually customize our complete um, class according to the schedule or the syllabus of the, this particular examination and the stress the, according to the weightage of the area, the weightage of the subject, we are actually scheduling our classes and with all areas we have to hide as we be highlighting that and accordingly we are actually preparing our schedule or preparing our the whole classes so that is how we actually uh, take the training so first we'll meet the uh, skill explorer experts here so we have like six experts here the first is uh, mr s Mandar prabhu he has got his be and he took his ms from london and currently he's pursuing his PhD in NIT Tiruchirappalli. He is the project management expert of Skill Explore, and he is currently the assistant professor of SRM University, India. And next expert is Mrs. S. Shivagama Sundari. Uh, she has got her BE and MS from London, and she is also currently uh, pursuing her PhD uh, and uh, in NIT Tiruchirappalli itself. And uh, she is the structural analysis expert, and she is also the currently uh, currently the assistant professor at uh, SRM University, India. Next is uh, Mrs. Uh, M. Divya. Uh, she has completed her BE and ME, and she. Um, uh, is currently pursuing her PhD in NIT Trichirapalli and uh, she is our geotechnical engineering expert and she is, uh, as I've already mentioned, she is the doctoral research uh, scholar at NIT Trichy, India. Next is uh, me, my sister, and I have completed my tech and MTech, and currently I'm pursuing my PhD in transportation engineering and management in NIT Tiruchirappalli. And I will be dealing with transportation engineering project folios, and I am currently the doctoral research uh, scholar at NIT Tiruchi, India. And next is uh, Mrs. M. Neera Jakshi. Uh, she has completed her DE and ME. She is our environmental engineering expert. And uh, she is from Tyagaraja College of Engineering, Madurai, India. And uh, finally, Mrs. Uh, Nirai Mati. She has completed her BE and she is our hydrology expert. And she is actually trained specifically for competitive examination preparations. And she is a competitive examination professional here. So now we'll move on to the subjects which we have to deal in uh, our examination that is upda MMU, uh, mmup examination so what objects we consider here according to their syllabus we have to study as and earthquake construction materials structural analysis 
soil mechanics and foundation, fluid mechanics, traffic engineering, survey, environmental engineering, contracts, pro um, project management and hydrology. All these subjects we have to cover for our examination point of view. So now we will see the weight of these subjects. So um, we have to identify which all subjects we have to stress more and study. So for that, we have to understand the weight of these subjects. The first is construction materials. From that, around two questions will be coming. Then structural analysis. From that, around five questions will be coming. Then soil mechanics and foundation. In that, uh, around three questions will be there. And fluid mechanics, around two questions will be there. Traffic engineering, actually it is not traffic engineering as such, it is a complete transportation engineering, transportation and traffic engineering thing. It is not traffic engineering alone. From that, it will all, there will be almost three questions. Then environmental engineering, there will be almost two questions from there. Surveying, almost two questions will be there. Contracts, almost one question will be there. Hydrology, almost one will be there. Project management, almost four questions will be, almost four questions will be there. And RCC and earthquake, there will be almost two questions. So from this table itself, we can understand which subject we have to stress more, right? We have to stress more for structural analysis part because most of the questions, that is more number of questions is coming from that area. Almost five questions will be coming from structural analysis part. So the first weightage that we have to give is for structural analysis. And the second weightage as from the table itself, we can identify that second page to the project management subject. In that, almost four questions will be there. And the third uh, portion or the third weightage that we have to give is for soil mechanics and foundation and traffic engineering. For both these things, for both these subjects, from each of these subjects, almost three questions will be coming. So first weightage for structural analysis, second weightage for project management, third weightage for soil mechanics and foundation and traffic engineering. So it doesn't mean that we don't have to study all the other uh, subjects. We have to study all the other subjects also because in order to crack the examination, we need to cover all the subjects. But the, uh, I'm just mentioning that most of the um, uh, questions will be coming from these core subjects. That's all. Next is uh, we'll see the percentage of the questions. The same thing it is actually given here as percentage. That is the first um, is structural analysis, as I've already mentioned, 19 percentage of the questions will be coming from that. Soil mechanics and foundation, almost 11 percentage will be there. Fluid mechanics, seven percentage of the questions from the, will be from uh, fluid mechanics. Traffic engineering, not traffic engineering, actually transportation engineering, it will be there. Almost 11 questions will be there. Environmental engineering, almost seven questions, seven percentage of questions will be there. Then surveying, almost seven percentage will be there. Contracts, uh, almost four percentage will be there. Hydrology, almost four percentage will be there. And project management, almost 15 percentage will be there from project management. So here, again, I'm stressing that we have to give more weightage for structural analysis. Second weightage, we have to give for project management. Third weightage, we have to give for traffic engineering and soil mechanics and foundation together. <clears throat> okay, you have to learn all the other subjects as well, but stress these subjects more, that's all. Okay, now moving on to the subject which, uh, subject which I am dealing with. I'll be dealing with your traffic engineering and roads portions. So I'll just give you a glimpse of the areas which we'll be covering in our uh, uh, training sessions and what all areas we'll be stressing and what all things we'll be uh, discussing in our classes and which all type, what all types of problems we'll be uh, discussing in our classes. In the end of the session, I'll also introduce you uh, to some of the previously asked questions in your uh, specific examples, UPDA, MMUP examination. So, uh, so uh, from by the end of this presentation, you'll get, be getting a general idea about traffic engineering and roads uh, syllabus and also uh, the type of the question that you get questions that you can be ex, uh, you would be ex, you can expect uh, for your particular examination so we'll move on first uh, that is traffic engineering and roads topic the uh, we know that there are different modes of transportation in our world there are like uh, air transportation then water, water transportation land transportation etc the mostly used kind of transportation is obviously the land transportation the land transportation can also be divided into two, uh, many actually, and uh, the mainly actually road transportation and uh, the second one that is uh, railway transportation. So 
but uh, if you are asked which one is the most flexible kind of transportation the answer will be road transportation right because uh, almost uh, most of our population will be preferring road transportation why is it like that because uh, road, road transportation will give you like door to door transportation so it is more flexible that is why it is more preferred so it is the most preferred mode of transportation so in your examination upda examination also they are giving more focus to the road transportation system so more uh, questions will be coming uh, from road transportation system for you people so that's why they have given the syllabus they have stressed four areas uh, for your particular examination and those areas are geometric design traffic transportation planning and pavement materials okay so the four major portions that will be covered in this syllabus are geometric design traffic transportation planning and pavement materials so we will see one by one so what is known as geometric design so before starting to design a, a, a highway what all things we need to uh, understand or what all things we have to consider for the design so the basic thing will be the length breadth and all those things that is length of the road width of the road width of the road in the sense the width of the carriage way uh, alone will be there and after that the width of the shoulders will be there actually the right of way shoulders and everything the total width of the pavement will be there so the length will be there width will be there and next thing will be the slope variations so the topography will be different for different areas right so it may be like rolling terrain or a plain terrain so plain surface may be there then rolling surface may be there so hilly areas will be there so uh, the terrain will be different so that will be a consideration and the various other considerations are uh, with the curves horizontal curves if any if uh, there is any curve in the um, in our road uh, can we give abruptly the curve uh, it is not given abruptly no some transition is given to uh, given for any particular curve so if it is given abruptly then accidents may occur so that has to be considered then speed of the um, vehicle design speed with speed for which speed we have to design that will be there uh, uh, the, there will be some friction in the pavement uh, is the friction necessary and uh, we have we actually expect a smooth pavement right but is a uh, friction is necessary for the pavement and if necessary what is the range of friction all these things will come under geometric design <clears throat> so it is a vast area and actually it is kind of the most important area in your examining point you start the curve the second thing is traffic engineering as the name suggests we'll be studying the traffic characteristics of the pavement what is mean by traffic meant by uh, traffic characteristics of a pavement traffic means uh, how many uh, number of maybe the capacity of the roadway how many vehicles can be uh, accommodated by that particular um, roadway and um, what is the design capacity of the pavement and also what is the actual capacity of the pavement that will be there and the speed of the vehicle in the sense spot speed at one, one particular point what is the speed of the vehicle it is not like design speed it is the actual speed of the vehicle what is the spot speed there that will be analyzed there and many other uh, characteristics like uh, traffic signs which all signs are necessary and that will be there and also various intersections will be there no uh, maybe diamond kind of intersection or a clover leaf kind of intersection which intersection is better what is the advantage of these intersections and what are the disadvantages and actually intersection and all those things will be coming under transport uh, uh, traffic engineering and then uh, next is transportation planning transportation planning in the sense uh, as the name suggests it is kind of a planning of the transportation system so planning in the sense in which aspect we have to plan a transportation system there will be like uh, various kind of trips will be there no something will be rested in home based trip. home based trips may be uh, maybe if if one person is traveling from home to office that is a home based uh, trip and if one person is traveling from office to home that is also a home based traffic a trip so if it is uh, for uh, office purpose if it is for home purpose and uh, in which mode he is traveling that person is traveling is he traveling in um, is he traveling through a bus or why he is choosing that uh, mode all these things will be coming under transportation planning area and next one is pavement materials pavement materials means you know the major pavement materials used are uh, what are the major pavement materials used it can be like water aggregates and cement right these are the 
major payment materials and uh, other thing is like vitamin and all those things are also added so anyways the main payment uh, materials if we are considering if we, if we are considering mixed use for payment uh, any concrete or payment materials means water aggregates and um, water aggregates and cement and uh, that is in the case of um, uh, concrete uh, payments in case of uh, flexible payments we will be considering the bitumen as well so all these things we have to um, study the uh, characteristics and the test of uh, these materials and all those things and this test and all those things will be covered under construction uh, materials portion and here we'll be giving only, only the general glimpse of that area which all pavement materials are used for our uh, for constructing a pavement and what all are the uh, layers of pavement flexible pavement will not be same as that of the case of rigid pavement like the layers will be different like uh, right if uh, for a flexible payment the um, a top surface will be covered for uh, bitumen uh, covered with bitumen and uh, the in concrete payment uh, it will be different so what are the layers and uh, sub base that is like sub grade sub base base and uh, the surface coats and all these things will be covered under pavement materials so these are these are the things uh, we cover under the major four heads for transportation engineering are geometric design traffic transportation planning and pavement materials so that's that and we'll see what all things are covered under each head so the first thing the first major and vast topic is highway geometric design so first before uh, starting the design of the highway um, our geometric characteristic itself we have to understand which all characteristic will be affecting the geometric characteristics of the pavement which all factors will be governing the geometric design of highways so as we as you can see in this slide the uh, major factors that affect the geometric design of highways are design speed topography traffic factors design early volume and capacity environmental and other factors we'll see one by one i'm not giving the complete lecture here i'm just giving the areas which we'll be covering in our uh, classes and how we'll be covering in those area um, how will we will be covering these uh, portions only i am just briefing you so why we have to we are considering design speed as one of the factors governing geometric design the first thing actually design speed is the most important characteristic uh, design so why design speed is important while uh, we are considering a pavement the vehicle will be, different vehicles will be there each of the vehicle may be traveling in different speed but there will be a minimum speed minimum speed of the vehicle there will be a maximum speed a vehicle can attain so uh, can we design the pavement with a minimum speed no we cannot design the pavement for maximum speed as well it will be mostly uneconomical so we will be considering which speed we have to consider for designing the pavement and why that is what is discussed under design speed and design speed for different kind of pavements for express way the design speed will be something for an nh the design speed will be something so all these things we will be discussing in detail under design speed factor next is topography the topography of different areas will be different right some areas it will be like uh, the slope will be varying or gradient will be varying some areas it will be plain some areas it will be rolling so all these things will affect the geometric design of highways traffic factors traffic factors will also affect traffic will be different in different regions right some areas it will be re residential some areas it will be industrial in some areas it will be like more uh, it firms and all those things the so traffic will be there more office will be offices will be there central business district at that area the uh, traffic will be very high so the traffic density and all those characteristics which should also be considered while designing a geometric while uh, geometrically designing the highway so that is one major characteristic then design early volume and capacity what is the maximum capacity of the pavement should we design the pavement for the maximum capacity no and why what is design early volume capacity volume and why is it more important for uh, our uh, exam point of view so that all those things we will be discussing all those things we'll be discussing and uh, next is environmental and other factors environmental and other factors um, that also varies like in certain areas the rainfall will be more right in the if the rainfall is more it will affect the drainage of the pavement so why why is it like that so in the more rainfall areas the design will be like something 
and uh, how much slope we have to provide and all these things will be there will be some specification if the rainfall is less the uh, there will be some specification the temperature affects the uh, geometry characteristics while designing so all these things play an important role and these are some of the factors which governs the geometric design of highways each and every factors we will be studying in detail so that is the first portion that come under geometric uh, highway geometric design and the second thing is highway cross section elements <clears throat> first uh, thing is friction we always expect our pavement to be as smooth as possible right but should the pavement be extremely smooth what happens if the pavement is extremely smooth that we have to study and uh, if uh, extremely smooth of course the vehicles will skid and accidents will occur right and if the friction is um, more than desired what happens again accidents may occur so what is the desirable friction level and why are we choosing that as a desirable friction level that is something we have to ponder on so that is one thing and pavement unevenness same as that we, we expect an even pavement right but how how to how extent our pavement should be even and if unevenness is there in what extent the unevenness is acceptable all those things we will study then light reflecting characteristics what are the light reflecting characteristics of the pavement light reflecting characteristics if the pavement is more light reflecting what are the negatives and it actually affects the night travel more right so all these things are highway cross section elements these also will be we will uh, we'll be covering in detail and next is cross slope or camber you might be uh, knowing what this cross slope and camber right so uh, while we are designing a pavement it uh, is it actually very smooth no right uh, smooth in the sense very plain no right it is not as plain as possible if it is plain what happens if there is some rainfall what happens the water may be retained in that itself there is no way for um, water to move away from the carriage way right so it will be sustained or retained in that pavement itself what will cause that um, what happens if it gets retained in that area some dip, uh, depressions or distresses or something will occur on that surface of the pavement and uh, yeah so the distresses will occur on the surface of the pavement so that is one negative to avoid that and that is one negative and this water also enters to the lower layers of the pavement and uh, it will get retained and the strength of the pavement get reduced so all these things will get affected and uh, so to avoid that we have to provide a slope for the pavement so right from the uh, starting itself that is by right from the consumption of the uh, uh, pavement uh, itself uh, how the pavement is uh, constructed itself the concept of camber was there for example the initial times that is the assyrian from the assyrian empire itself the uh, road was constructed started to construct the first is actually by the uh, pioneers uh, of road construction that is the romans they have constructed appian way in that appian way what they have did uh, they have done is they dug the pavement to uh, some depth maybe like 1.75 to 1.25 uh, 1.2 meter depth and they have filled it with big stones and uh, they have leveled it so there was no slope there at that time itself they understood that if water is entering uh, if there is no slope there then water will enter to the lower layers and that causes problem and also it was uneconomical because at that time those times it um, vehicles were not there more vehicles were not were in there so this much thickness of uh, pavement is not required so after that for tresagway construction metcalf construction then telford construction and the latest and the most uh, recent one that is the macadam construction all those people they have considered the camber for their construction so for the camber itself the first trisagway construction they have cons um, considered the uh, slope for only the surface layer they didn't give the slope for the sub surface or the sub grade layer so at that case they identified the problem that the, if we are not giving the uh, slope for the sub grade layer then they, that causes some problem so step by step they have identified the concept of this camber right from the initial uh, time itself so uh, that itself so we can understand how important the camber is so uh, the camber can be provided in different shapes right it can be uh, in parabolic shape it can be like straight line camber and it can be a combination of uh, a straight and parabolic type uh, camber so which one is better and why do we prefer all these uh, types of uh, shapes of uh, uh, camber all these things are discussed um, in our sessions 
and uh, the e, the formula is different for each of these things. Parabolic, you can see here, two x square divided by n w, and one in it, uh, n is the uh, slope, and x is the distance, and um, uh, one in x is the slope. And here you can see the formula. So, uh, so first we'll uh, introduce you to the shape of the uh, pavement uh, chambers for different uh, different shapes of the chambers. An important formula here, and the recommended values for different uh, type of the pavements, and some uh, practice problems will be introduced in our sessions. And next is next is highway geometric design. Uh, next portion is the width of the pavement or carriageway. Width of the pavement means, uh, as we have already mentioned, the width of the pavement may be like uh, the width of the carriageway alone, then the width of the roadway or the formation completely, and then right of way. All these things we have to study in detail. Some example is recommended land width for different classes of rural roads is given here. So NH and SH open areas normal range is 40, plain and rolling terrain or open areas normal range is 45, and um, range is actually 30 to 60. So all these things we have to study. We have to actually study all these things. These may be there in your examination as well. So uh, then it's cross section of the roads. That is one important portion that is the cross section of the roads. And that will also be introduced here. Here also we can see the cross section of different kinds of roads. First is other district roads and next is rural area roads. That is major district roads. And uh, the last one is national or state highway roads. All these things will be discussed in detail in your sessions. And uh, next important point is side distance. In this area, repeated questions are normally asked. That is the major three uh, distances, side distances are stopping side distance, overtaking side distance, and intermediate side distance. Stopping side distance. What First, we will see what is side distance itself. Side distance means if you are traveling in a pavement, and uh, if you are traveling in a pavement, how much amount of distance is visible in front of you? or safely stopping the vehicle. That is known as stopping distance. That is, you are traveling in a pavement. Any, okay, any driver is traveling in a pavement. Some obstruction he is seeing from here. He, um, it is visible for him. So if he is traveling, if um, what is the safe stopping side distance between that object and the traveling vehicle so that collision will not occur before him stopping it. So that is what is known as stopping side distance. Before him stopping the vehicle, how much distance is there so that this uh, vehicle will not collide with the coming upcoming obstruction? So that is studied in the stopping side distance. This can be like uh, when the driver is uh, just seeing the obstruction there, uh, he, it will take some time for him to understand that an obstruction is there and you have to apply the brake so that you won't collide. So that time is known as lag distance. That itself is divided as perception, intellection, emotion and volition. Perception means something is there, he is identifying. And intellection means it is actually the senses is sent to him and uh, he is understanding that uh, you have to stop it. Then emotion means there might be some emotion such as uh, anger or stress or something like that. So uh, the time spent for that. And volition means the time actually he uh, <clears throat> takes to apply the brake. That At that time, the vehicle will be traveling in the uh, speed in which it was, it was already traveling. So that is known as lag distance. And after he perceives or uh, he applies the brake, the vehicle will also travel for a some amount of distance. That is known as braking distance. So the stopping side distance itself is divided into lag distance and braking distance. So stopping side distance is a combination of lag distance and braking distance. There will be there is a different different formula for lag distance and different formula for braking distance. So the total of stopping side distance will be the sum of these two. So that itself is uh, we have uh, itself we have to study. Same for taking distance. How much distance should be there? It should be should be there in between your vehicle, the drive, um, the vehicle you are driving, and the vehicle which you are expecting to overtake, so that there won't be a proper, uh, there won't be a collision between these two vehicles. That is known as overtaking side distance. Here, more number of things are we have to consider. You are traveling in the design speed or the speed which you are expected to travel in that particular road. And the, maybe the vehicle in front of you will be traveling in a sp lesser speed. So you are trying to overtake that lesser speed of uh, speed vehicle. So in that case, you you while you are reducing the speed also, you shouldn't collide with the um, vehicle incoming, um, overtaken vehicle. 
and uh, overtaking with while overtaking the vehicle you are changing the lane right you are changing from one lane to other lane so then only you can overtake while you are changing the lane the uh, vehicles may be coming from the opposite direction it will be uh, traveling in another speed or maybe the same speed itself so you shouldn't collide with that vehicle so that also you should consider and uh, after uh, you are passing the distance overtaking distance then you have uh, actually cross the um, again there is a lane change you have to come back to the original lane itself at that time you shouldn't collide with the al already uh, overtaken vehicle so all these things are considered in the overtaking side distance so a, a set of formula and the combination of the formula is there for overtaking side distance that you have to study and these are some important portions under highway geometric design next is intermediate side distance intermediate side distance means in certain areas you can't provide the complete overtaking side distance and all in that case we'll just uh, take the double of uh, so stopping side distance and provide so all these things the concepts the important formulae the problems all these will be discussed under our sections sessions next is uh, next important portion is super elevation so what is known as super elevation you are traveling Uh, you are traveling in a um, uh, road, and you are seeing a horizontal curve there. And uh, while you are traversing that horizontal curve, the centrifugal action will be there, no? So, some uh, due to the centrifugal uh, force, uh, there are chances that the vehicle may overturn. Overturn. That is, the vehicle may topple due to the effect of the uh, centrifugal action. What can be done to tackle this problem? so for that we can actually raise the outer edge of the pavement to some extent so that we can counteract this centrifugal force and that raising is known as super elevation so uh, there will be a set of formula for super elevation and so we have to study the concept important formula and problems in that area as well here also we could we can expect some repeated uh, questions from super elevation another thing is the radius of the horizontal curve what should be the radius of the horizontal curve so that there won't be any problems while encountering the curve so there will be a minimum radius there will be a uh, maximum radius there will be a grade compensation all these things will be studied under this radius of the horizontal curve so concept important formula and problems in this area will also be discussed in the in our classes next is uh, widening of the horizontal curve okay by we are into encountering a horizontal curve uh, if uh, will the width be the same as that on the other uh, road sides as well no right some widening will be provided in the um, horizontal curve why do we provide that widening there are actually many reasons for providing actually mainly two reasons for providing the widening it can be uh, given for a mechanical widening reason and psychological widening reason mechanical widening that is when a four wheeler or a uh, six wheel vehicle not a two wheeler vehicle uh, is uh, traversing negotiating a horizontal curve at relatively slow speed the rear wheels that is there will be two sets of wheels will be there no the rear wheels will not trace the same path as the corresponding front wheels there are chances that this rear wheels will go out of this width of the pavement why we are encountering a curve to avoid this we will be giving extra width to the pavement that is known as mechanical widening of the pavement we can provide this uh, width to one side alone or we can provide we can evenly distribute to both sides where do we provide where all we provide it for one side alone where all we split this width and in two areas all these things we have to study in psychological widening thing that for extra safety uh, these drivers will have a tendency to move to one one edge while uh, encountering a curb in that case it also we have a uh, at that case also there is a possibility that uh, maybe one or two one wheel may go out of this uh, pavement bit in that case also so a widening may uh, is required that is a kind of psychological widening so two sets of formula two formula is there for mechanical and uh, psychological widening and how the cons, uh, problems will be ca coming in these areas these things will also be discussed uh, in our sessions so the concept important formula and problems here as well as well next is transition curve we have already mentioned right uh, while we are encountering a curve we can't just abruptly put a curve somewhere so we have to give a proper transition there we can't give a, like straight road curve and then straight road we can't give like that we have to transition the curve how we are transitioning the curve what are the functions and what are the types there are actually different types of transition curves the different uh, shapes for transition curve why do we provide different uh, shapes for transition curve 
where all these types of cars are provided, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, and also important point, the length, which are, the, how much the length, here we can see the transition curve in the figure. So what is the expected length or desired length for this transition curve and its problems, all these things are uh, considered here. And next is the setback distance and clearance distance of the horizontal curve. So uh, some setback distance or clearance distance should also be present in the pavement for uh, while encountering a horizontal curve. What is the concept and why? what are the important formulae here and what are the problems coming under that? Curve resistance, all these things will be discussed. Next is uh, we'll see what is setback distance or clearance distance on horizontal curves. In the design of horizontal alignment, the side distance along the inner side of the curve should also be considered as we have already mentioned, side distance is important. So when there are slight obstruction like buildings, cut slopes or tree on the inner side of the curves, either the obstruction should be removed or the alignment should be changed in order to provide adequate side distance. So here also the key is side distance. To provide adequate side distance, some changes should be given in the alignment. So that is actually known as a setback distance or clearance distance. It actually depends on the factors like required side distance, radius of the horizontal curve, length of the curve. It may be greater or less than the S. What is S? Here the S is the side distance. Here we, we will see some practice problems here at the end of the, uh, the presentation itself. There we can see what is this S, Y, how the uh, formula is considered and all these things we will see. So it depends on these factors. Next is uh, design of the vertical alignment. Vertical alignment itself, there are actually summit curves, valley curves, many things are there. Gradients, as we have already discussed, there will be like three types of gradients. Ruling gradient will be there, limiting gradient will be there, exceptional gradient will be there. How are these gra gradients, how these gradients differ? And what is the ex um, expected range of gradients for different kinds of uh, roads? And all these things we'll discuss. Then that is actually gradients for roads in different terrains. All these things we'll discuss. Then summit curves and valley curves. What is what are summit curves and what are valley curves? Summit curves, anyways, there will be, uh, as in the case of horizontal curves, there will be vertical curves uh, also. Horizontal curves means horizontal curve. Horizontally um, on 2D areas, uh, areas and summit curves and uh, uh, vertical curves means vertical uh, uh, curves like if the curve is convexity upwards, then summit curves. And if the curve is actually concavity upwards, then that is valley curve. So all these things will be there. And in summit curves itself, there are a set of formulae. It is also an important area. There will be a set of formulae. That is in summit curves, we have to check whether the length of the summit curve um, uh, is uh, less or greater than uh, stopping side distance. So, and again, the length of the summit curve should be um, uh, what length of the summit curve is given for overtaking side distance and intermediate side distance. All these things will be discussed separately. Then valley curve, again, the length of the valley curve for comfort condition and length of the valley curve for headlight side distance condition. All these things we'll address separately and the concept, its important formulae and problems. All these things will be addressed one by one. Okay, next is uh, traffic. Next important point is uh, the traffic region, traffic engineering. Traffic engineering means... Um, what all the uh, the traffic characteristics of the pavement? There are many basic terminology terminologies for traffic engineering. So, for example, there will be like capacity itself. I'll give you just a glimpse of the um, capacity area. Traffic capacity itself we can study in different levels. That is, what we have we might know what is traffic volume and traffic capacity. The general two words, uh, two phrases we might know. The first is the traffic volume. Traffic volume means the number of vehicles moving in a specified direction on a given lane or roadway that pass a given point or cross section during specified unit of time. Just that a number of vehicles passing a, a particular um, point at a specified unit of time. That is known as traffic volume. And traffic capacity means the ability of the road to carry the number of uh, vehicles. That is known as traffic capacity. So um, these two things we might know. Traffic volume, number of vehicles passing a particular point and traffic capacity, maximum amount of uh, vehicles that a, a road can carry. And uh, there are new terms like basic capacity, possible capacity, 
practical capacity etc we need to understand these areas as well for example basic capacity is the maximum number of passenger cars that can pass a given point on a lane or roadway during one hour under the most nearly ideal roadway and traffic conditions which can possibly attain be attained that is number of vehicles that pass a particular point of time in one hour in most ideal condition we cannot design a, a, a pavement for for a basic capacity we cannot expect a pavement to be in its ideal condition so, but we have to understand what is the basic capacity of that pavement and the yeah, another thing thing is the possible capacity possible capacity also the same thing the maximum number of uh, vehicles that can pass to a purpose a particular um, a, a given point on the lane of roadway during a, one hour same as in the case of basic capacity here the uh, key point is it is actually a, for the prevailing roadway conditions not for ideal roadway condition so this is more practical but what is practical capacity again it is not possible capacity pa practical capacity is different it is the maximum number of vehicle that can pass a given point on a lane or roadway during one hour without traffic density being so great as to cause unreasonable delay hazard or restriction to the driver's freedom to maneuver under the prevailing roadway and traffic conditions so this is actually the most practical way to put the capacity so mostly while we design a highway highway we'll uh, consider the most practical way that is the <clears throat> practical capacity so for one single term capacity itself there are this many number of term, uh, uh, subdivisions so uh, the, those comes under the traffic engineering so next is uh, uh, static characteristics and dynamic characteristics static characteristics without moving and dynamic characteristics while moving so all these things we have to study step by step then dimensions of different vehicles why do we have to know the dimensions of the different vehicles uh, while designing the pavement uh, while uh, width of the roadway and all those things the traffic uh, the dimensions of the vehicles come into play so in rural areas and all more number of trucks and all will be there in that in those areas and in the uh, in those areas while we are designing a pavement we have to know the uh, width of the um, vehicles which uh, we can expect in that area right and also while we are designing an underpass or overpass there will be like roof in the underpass while we are designing a tunnel and all those things there will be roof no so height of the vehicle come into play there so uh, the dimensions of the different vehicles we have to understand then other traffic flow fundamentals that is many other uh, th uh, things which also which are also considered here headway distances spacing between the vehicles all these things will be discussed and levels of service levels of service is another important portion and uh, i have seen some repeated questions from this area <clears throat> for levels of service it is actually a qualitative analysis of how uh, freely a vehicle can maneuver in that area so for that uh, the uh, roads are divided into uh, six classes that is level of service a level of service b level of service c level of service d level of service e and level of service f i i have actually included a glimpse of that area in the upcoming slides we'll see how it is divided and all these things we'll be discussing next is traffic volume study traffic volume itself as we have seen in the capacity portion traffic volume also can be divided into different ways in <clears throat> do we have to design our um, <clears throat> sorry do we have to design our payment for the maximum volume no then it will be uneconomical so we have to find out some kind of attribute some uh, design uh, and average annual daily traffic or some kind of uh, uh, traffic we have to consider for the design purpose and uh, which one uh, is more apt for design purpose and why why are we selected that there are many kind of traffic volume study that is traffic volume design hourly volume average annual daily traffic average annual weekday traffic and all these things actually <clears throat> average daily traffic average weekday traffic peak hour factor all the peak hour factor and all repeated questions come under this peak hour factor problems here also, here also the concept formula and important problems we will discuss i and we'll see what is this level of service alone is um, introduced how this level of service alone is introduced we'll see how it is done the uh, first is uh, the level of service a level of service a means that here in the um, uh, in the figure itself we can see that there are not much traffic the vehicles can maneuver in whichever way we, uh, they want so uh, the traffic flows or above are post <coughs> uh, flows in or above the uh, posted speed so complete mobility between the lanes are there 
So such a level of service is known as the level of service A. It occurs late at night in urban areas and frequently in rural areas. Then level of service B. Here we can see some more vehicles are there in the road. So it's, it's actually a reasonably free flow, but we cannot say that it is completely free. So the traffic stream is slightly restricted than level of service A. Here motorists still have a high level of physical and psychological comfort. And next comes the level of service C. Here some more vehicles are there, but here also a stable flow at or near the free flow is there. So here the lane changes require more driver awareness and most experienced drivers uh, and com are comfortable are only comfortable here. And this is the target LOS for some urban and most rural highways. And level of service B, more vehicles are present. So it is kind of an, uh, approaching the unstable flow. So uh, the freedom to maneuver is uh, within the traffic stream is much more limited. Here, minor incidents like busy stopping corridor in the mid of a weekday or a functional urban highway during or commuting hours, all these things could be expected. And next is final two, that is a level of service E and level of service F. In level of service E, we can see that it is actually unstable flow. So it is not, it is not completely in a stopped condition, but still it is nearing the stopped condition. So here the flow becomes irregular and speed varies rapidly. So any incident will create serious de delays. Driver's level of comfort becomes poor. And level of service F means post or breakdown. That is, the vehicles are standing still, still there. So travel time cannot be predicted. And for example, a highway might be at level of service B for the AMP car. That's it. So uh, in the traffic capacity study, we have already uh, mentioned how it is done and traffic density, traffic volume, traffic capacity, and uh, cap basic capacity, and uh, uh, possible capacity, practical capacity, all these things we have already, uh, uh, at, um, we have already uh, mentioned before. And next is traffic volume study. Here, uh, we'll see how traffic volume is studied one by one. One, the traffic volume uh, we have already mentioned. And next is next important category is the 30th highest hourly volume or design hourly volume. So it is actually found from the plot between hourly volume and the number of hours in a year that the traffic volume is exceeded, uh, exceeded 30th highest hourly volume is the hourly volume that is exceeded only 29 times a year. So that is actually taken for the design purposes generally. Then average annual daily traffic. So average traffic for the 33, 65 days, that is normally taken for as average annual daily traffic. It is measured by the present demand for service by the street or highway, developing the major or arterial street, etc. Then average annual weekday traffic. Here, the 24 hour traffic volume is stressed here. Then average daily traffic. Here, the given location for some period, but less than a year is considered. Then average weekday traffic. Here on weekdays alone for some period of uh, uh, period of uh, year less than a year such as for months or a season so everything is different then peak factor, peak factor we'll see a problem also in the upcoming sessions uh, in the upcoming slides here the peak uh, factor is typically calculated from the traffic counts so um traffic counts so it is the average volume during the peak 60 minute period so this we will be um, learning more in the upcoming problem. So at the peak 60 period, minutes, what is the maximum traffic we can expect? Divide it by 4 into maximum 15 minutes traffic we can expect. So if we if we are dividing the traffic into like uh, 16 minutes, what is the maximum uh, traffic we can expect there? And we are dividing it into sections. What is the maximum uh, 15 minutes traffic we can expect there? So 60 minute traffic divided by 4 into 15 minutes maximum traffic is known as the peak factor. I have seen like more than four or five times we have they have asked the peak factor questions alone. So in your examination. So that is one important thing. And for uh, if it is not like 15 minutes, we can also change the formula. Like uh, for if they are asked for like 5, 10, 20 minutes, we can change the formula accordingly. Instead of 4, you can give like 60 divided by n. n is the number of minutes they are asking. So the formula can be changed as well. So you have to see the check the problems or the questions, uh, how they are given. It is it, They might not always ask 15 minutes itself. So that you have to check. Then next to speed study, spot speed study. At a particular point, what is the speed of the uh, vehicle? That itself we can say, then average speed of the vehicle. That itself we can study in two different ways. That is space means speed and time means speed. Those two things are just one major, um, uh, one major portion. 
the running speed, overall speed or travel speed, all these things we have to study. The types of speed studies, speed studies that uh, we, as I have already mentioned, uh, uh, that I've already mentioned, you have to uh, the speed area, uh, st uh, start speed and uh, 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 spot speed we can study and also the speed and delay can um, also be studied then important relations repeated questions are also have also come from this area that is the uh, <clears throat> speed density relation as uh, speed increases we can uh, we know that density decreases so this graph they'll ask they'll give like four or five four graphs and they'll ask you to choose which is the right one then volume density relation here you can see as uh, flow increases, the density increases up to a particular point and then it decreases. Why? That we have to address. <clears throat> Next is what is the relation between speed and volume? That we have to address. Then origin and destination study. Why, why, why are we studying origin and destination? We have to understand, we have to find out the expected traffic there. So that is origin and destination study. Then what are the methods used for collecting this origin and destination data? Then the, how we can uh, present this origin and destination data? We normally present the origin and destination data by the desire lines, desire lines plotting. That is according to the number of uh, traffic, we plot lines between our uh, starting point and end point. If the number of um, traffic is, if the traffic is increasing, the thickness of the desire lines will be more. So that is one method for presenting the origin and destination data. So uh, uh, that one, then relationship between the speed, travel time, volume, density, capacity, as we have already mentioned, that will be there. Then conflict points, that is one major thing. What are the conflict points? Why we are traveling on a pavement? We, there will be like many conflict points. Why if we are crossing a point, then there will be a conflict. And uh, if two uh, ways are there, and if it is merged, then there will be a conflict there. And why we are diverging, if two ways are there and it is getting diverged, then there will be some number of conflicts. So that we have to study in detail. So for example, with an example figure itself, we'll show you how the conflicts will be there. For example, if there are, there are two roads, road number, road A and road B. Road A has two lanes. Road B has again two, la two lanes. Then number of potential conflicts, how many types of conflicts can arrive there if both these roads, that is road A and road B are two way roads. That is road B A has uh, two lanes, road b has two lanes both these are two ways then we can expect 24 number of conflicts if road a is one way and road b is two way then the number of conflicts will be reduced from 24 to 11 and if both roads are one way obviously number of conflicts will be less six number of conflicts alone will be there so all these things we will be studying <clears throat> For example, on a um, right angle road intersection with two way traffic and the total number of con conflict points are 24. As we have seen here, right angle, two way traffic, total number 24. So this consists actually, this actually consists of 16 crossing conflicts, which are the major conflict points. The merging and diverging conflicts are considered as minor conflicts numbering four in each case. Okay, so 16 plus four plus four. Uh, four. That, uh, that is how this 24 uh, conflicts are have arise. So like that, if we are changing the, uh, the question, maybe like uh, there are two roads and both these are four lane roads and uh, one is uh, one way and one is two way. So and, um, how many number of conflicts we can expect there? So options will be option A, 24, option B, 17, option D, C, 8, and option D, 25. You have to rightly choose option D. We cannot sit and draw each of these conflict points and we cannot count how many conflicts uh, have arrived there. So this um, table is actually very, very important in your exam point of view. So that will be there. We'll discuss that. And then intersections. Intersections also, there will be like horizontal intersections and there will be like grade intersection. There, in each of these will be addressed separately. Horizontal intersection, it, uh, if, the, if it is grade separated intersection, then there will be underpass, then overpass, trumpet interchange, diamond interchange, clover leaf interchange, partial clover leaf interchange and directional interchange. One by one, we'll address all these intersections. 
and we also see at which areas which um, areas we will be giving these kinds of intersections why do we give these kinds of intersections what are the advantages and disadvantages of each of these intersections we will address all these things one by one next is at grade intersection it can be three place channelized one we will be uh, uh, we will be giving a channel and um, we will be providing channels and we are asking them to follow that uh, particular channel so channelized intersections will be there in some areas it will be unchannelized intersection and finally rotary intersection all these three will be discussed separately including the advantages and disadvantages next important portion is the levels of intersection control also there are actually three levels of intersection control which will be passive control semi control and active control so three all these three things will be addressed one by one so passive control uh, it will come like no control traffic signs give way control two way stop control all way stop control traffic signs plus marking all these things will come under uh, what um passive control next is semi control as we have already discussed it will be like channelization and traffic rotaries all these things will be coming under semi control and the third thing is active control traffic signals will come under active control we can see here different kinds of traffic signals and you they might ask you like one figure they'll give one figure four figures they'll be giving you and they you will be asked to choose which is which one is give way sign and what is the dimension of the giveaway sign all these things might be asked for example for stop sign it is intended to stop the vehicle and here we can see the stop sign it is octagonal in shape red in color and white border that is how stop sign is given and the sign may also contain stop that uh, letter stop written in english or any other languages as uh, preferred as necessary that is about stop sign again giveaway sign give way sign is used to control the vehicles on a road so as to assign the right of way to the traffic or other roadways so this sign is actually triangular in shape and <clears throat> with an apex downwards and white border so all these things we have to understand so it will be in uh, high color with red border so this is actually apex downwards not apex upwards so four options will be there it might get confused so all these things we have to study separately so um, so these things will be uh, addressed and next is transportation planning so that is about traffic so we have covered what all things we will be covering in geometric intersection uh, geometric characteristics of the pavement then traffic and third one is the transportation planning the transportation planning actually the, uh, it is actually the main things are divided into four that is trip generation how it is generated and how it is distributed that is trip distribution then mode choice which mode is chosen and finally the trip assignment so these four things are states, um, are considered for um, major things that is the transportation planning then next is uh, zoning zoning means how <clears throat> the areas can be divided as different zones like um, the uh, zones for residential area zones for industrial area zones for uh, other uh, business areas so something zones have to be divided for each areas so what all criteria we have consider we have to consider while um, zoning all these things will be considering then additional portions are also considered such as uh, road user characteristics and car for line models these are actually introduced here because we have seen previous year questions uh, from these areas so we have also included these portions here that is pipes model cobs model general motors model optimal velocity model then moving observer method these things are also introduced because it has asked the previous year questions and <clears throat> some example problems will also be discussed for each and every sections which we, uh, we have mentioned here we will be giving you example problems just after this session and also after completing the complete, uh, complete sessions we will be giving you quizzes and you can take the quizzes and mock tests will also be there so finally the payment materials part the payment materials part as we have already mentioned aggregates will be there bitumen will be there aggregate bitumen mix will be there in the case of water for even constructing the payments also the uh, water chosen a uh, water um, used should be portable water what is portable water the standards for drinking water the um, uh, a drinking water a water which could um, which can be used for drinking purposes is known as portable water so at that level the water should be pure 
so uh, those things we will be discussing and uh, desirable property aggregates can be of two types fine aggregates and coarse aggregates so uh, it can according to various uh, this is according to the size other things also in other ways also we can split the types of aggregates maybe uh, like naturally occurring aggregates artificially occurring aggregates or these ways also we can split the type of aggregates so here um, <clears throat> Uh, we'll split, uh, split it as fine aggregates and coarse aggregates for our uh, payment construction uh, purpose. So for coarse aggregates, we use it for strength characteristics, and fine aggregates we use it to fill the gaps and uh, uh, gaps of the uh, uh, fill the void. Mm, uh, what are the purposes of each of these materials, and uh, how are these uh, these things will be addressed in more detail in the construction materials portion. And here we'll be giving just the general idea of these payment materials. What are the desirable properties of uh, soil? What are the desirable properties of aggregates? Then important thing, what is the difference between bitumen and tar? These are normally used interchange as interchangeable, but it is not like that. It is different. What is bitumen and what is tar? Why is it di uh, different? And then tests on bitumen. There are various tests for aggregates, various tests for soil, various tests for bitumen. All these things are will be discussed. Actually, this will be discussed more in detail in the then next thing is the composition of the pavement how the pavement is composed of and the components of flexible pavement the components of the flexible pavement will not be the same for that of the components of the rigid pavement both will be different why is it different and what are the layers what are the thickness of each of these layers all these things along with the cross-section figures we'll be introducing then uh, typical flexible pavement failures and typical rigid pavement failures. What are the uh, failures which we normally see on the flexible pavement? Uh, pavement. Flexible pavement is our uh, bitumen pavement itself. So normally the bitumen surface pavement itself. So here, <clears throat> what are the pavement failures we normally address? There can be a variety of pay payments. You'll be familiar with uh, potholes, right? Potholes will be there on the pavement. Then uh, raveling may there be there on the pavement. Then cracking. Cracking itself can be divided into two. There will be longitudinal cracks and there will be transverse cracks. Both these kinds of uh, cracks can be uh, seen on the pavement. And again, uh, the uh, this if both are there, both uh, these are there and it has grown to a some extent, it can be like an uh, alligator boot. So al uh, allig uh, it will be like similar to the skin of the alligator. So it is kind of an alligator crack, like a mesh or something. So again, it will be alligator cracks will be formed on the surface. If again, it is uh, distressed, it is becoming distressed and this alligator crack will be again <clears throat> form, uh, formed as a pothole. Um, will, will be developed to a pothole after a, some period of time. So that may occur. So all these kinds of uh, um, distresses will be addressed one by one. And another major thing which, which we normally see is rutting. Rutting means when the <clears throat> wheel is moved over the surface of the pavement, uh, the, the depression may uh, occur along the path of this wheel. That is known as rutting, which is one of the important failures. And depressions may, they, may be there on the pavement. Depressions is not same as pothole. Pothole is different. Depression is different. different. Then uh, settlement, uneven settlements will be there on the pavement. So all these things, different kinds of fa failures will be there on the flexible pavement. But the same, uh, for the rigid pavement failures, it is not the same. The uh, distresses seen on the flexible payments uh, payments may not be there on the rigid payment. The, it is completely different. Here the uh, double bars will be there and all these things, the um, uneven uh, movement of these uh, payment surfaces will be there. So uh, these the, the kind of uh, uh, distresses which we can expect in rigid payment uh, is different. So we will be addressing uh, both these with different, uh, uh, yeah, both these separately. So now we will see some of the previous questions. So here we, the initial, some of the questions are uh, from the uh, just uh, from the exam just uh, um, um, one week before. That is uh, one week before these questions are asked in the previous um, exam. So this is the most recent questions. The first 10 questions will be the most recent questions that are asked. So we'll discuss from that. We'll start from that. And then some previous year questions will also be addressed in the upcoming slides. So first question. A driver rounds a curve at a speed of 60 miles per hour and sees a truck overturned on a roadway level ahead. How far will the driver's vehicle travel before the driver's foot reaches the brake? So the question is very clear. They are asking how far the vehicle will travel 
before the driver's foot reaches the brake so they are asking uh, before the uh, brake is applied how far the vehicle moves anyways while braking the vehicle will stop so there so if this is something related to stopping side distance right the vehicle moving uh, and stopping so stopping something related to stopping side distance as we have already mentioned stopping side distance can be split into two lag distance and braking distance before the application of the brake uh, while uh, the driver sees the uh, object he'll um, um, while um, he is understanding that we have to you have to apply a brake that time itself the vehicle is moving that is known as uh, lag distance after the application of the brake the vehicle moves to some distance that is known as braking distance so the stopping side distance is divided as lag distance and braking distance the formula is ss is equal to bt plus b square by 2 gf so uh, how far will the driver's vehicle travel before the driver's foot reaches the brake right so that is they are asking about lag distance after the application of the brake it will be braking distance so before the application of the brake that is lag distance so from this formula we have to separate this bt part alone so we have to find out the bt part so uh, uh, the answer is given in feet our question in our question the speed is given in miles per hour so we have to concentrate on the units and in what unit they are asking you have to con convert it and then give the answer so here only bt we have to find out what is v the speed of vehicle and what is t t is a reaction time if the reaction time is not given in the question in this question the reaction time is not given if it is not given in the question you have to choose it as 2.5 seconds so you have to by heart this value you have to choose it as 2.5 seconds so the lag distance is <clears throat> this uh, speed of the vehicle into 2.5 seconds so first of all we have to convert the speed into feet per second 60 miles per hour is equal to 88 feet per second after converting it that value into the reaction time 2.5 gives 220 feet so the answer is option b that is 220 feet so you have to uh, find the, you have to find you shouldn't find the complete st stopping side distance and give the answer there error can occur you shouldn't give the answer in some miles <clears throat> uh answering miles where the error can occur so you have to stress the unit identify the unit and what they are asking separate uh, uh carefully so we read the question well take your time and then find out the answer but thing is time frame is also less so you have to um you have to solve more and more questions then also then only you can be familiar with the pattern of the questions and then only you can solve it fastly so that's that and next question asto the abbreviation of asto this is this has been asked many times so they have given four options one is american authority of state highway and transportation officials american association of state highway and um, transportation officials then american association of state express way and transportation officials and finally american society of state highway and Trans traffic officials so four options are given if uh, you check the first two options a and b only one word is different the first option it is american authority and the second option is american association so it can be confusing so you have to thoroughly study the abbreviations as well so uh, the uh, frequently asked abbreviations are astm and asto astm is american society for testing and materials asto is american association of state highway and transportation officials so uh, the option correct option is um, uh, option b that is american association of state highway and transportation officials apart from these two abbreviations some other abbreviations are also found to be asked in the previous years that also we will be discussing in our sessions and question number 3 Question number three is: If a roadway has a design speed of sixty-five miles per hour and the maximum values of e is equal to e, what is e? E is the super elevation, and f is equal to point one one. What is f? Coefficient of friction. The minimum radius is computed as radius. Radius is uh, uh, the uh, the formula for radius is v square divided by e plus f into g. the thing is this formula is gives the answer in meter per second or meter 
So here the b value is in meter per second. R minimum is equal to b by e plus second to g. Here the b is in meter per second. But in our question, the answer is in miles per hour. So first we have to convert the value into my meter per second. That is 29.05 meter per second. 65 miles per hour is equal to 29.05 meter per second. So first we have to convert to meter per second. Then R minimum, compute the R minimum. That is 452 meters. While we are computing, substituting this 29.05 meters in the formula, we will get the answer as 452 meters. But again, here the answer is given in feet. We have to again convert this into feet. That, that gives the answer as 1483 feet. So the unit plays a very important role in your questions. So to show that this question itself is enough. Here also first we have converted into meter per second. Again, we have to convert it into feet. So the answer is that. So option B is the answer, 1483 feet. Next question that I've already mentioned, peak hour flow is a frequently asked area. So uh, what is the maximum value of peak hour flow? And what is the minimum value of peak hour flow? Both these are asked. Maximum value of peak hour flow options are A1, B.35, C0, and B.25. Again, what is the minimum value of peak hour flow? Option A.5. Option B, 1, option C, 0.25, and option B, 0.75. So these are the two questions. So if we have already seen what is the peak curve flow, the peak curve flow is a typically calculated for the traffic counts. The flow value, uh, the term flow itself suggests that it is something related, related to traffic count. So it is the average volume during the peak 60 minute period, we average 60 divided by four times the average volume during the peak 15 minutes period, we average 15. We will we'll particularly see how this, it is done in the next uh, okay, upcoming uh, problems. And here, the limit of this uh, peak curve flow is generally between 0.25 and 1. From this range, we can identify what is the minimum value of peak curve flow and what is the maximum value of peak curve flow. So for the first question, that is the maximum value of peak curve flow, the answer is 1. That is option A. Minimum value of peak curve flow, the answer is 0.25. That is option C. Fine. So questions four and five are that. And question number six. Here, uh, a, this is a problem. Here we can see a district road with a bituminous pavement has a horizontal curve of 1,000 meters for a design speed of 75 kilometers per hour. The super elevation is option A, 1 in 40. Option B, 1 in 50. Option C, 1 in 60. And option D, 1 in 70. We'll see how it is done. The super elevation E is equal to V square divided by 225 into R. We can just substitute the values. V is the design speed or the speed of the uh, uh, here design speed. Here V it is given as 75 kilometers per hour. Substitute by the value for V. Then R. R is given as a horizontal curve radius. It is given as 1000 meters. So just substitute the value. 75 into 75 divided by 225 into 1000. The answer is 0 0.025, but it is not there in the option bit. Right? So why it is not there? They are asking in the form of how many, uh, how how many, how much distance for one meter super elevation? How much super elevation for one meter distance? So in that way they have asked. So one divided by answer is 40. So the answer is one in 40. So you have to check how the answer is given in the option, and then you have to write it there. You have to choose the options. So answer is option A, that is 1 in 40. You have to just substitute the values, find the answer, and if it is given in this 1 in something form, then just divide the answer by, uh, from 1, and then you can put it like 1 in 40. So, we have already discussed the uh, uh, factor uh, problem. So, here it is, using the following traffic comes, determining the peak hourly traffic volume, and what is the peak hour factor. So here we can see the 15 minutes interval traffic is provided here. In the 415 to 430, volume is 520. 430 to 445, volume is 580. 445 to 5, volume is 670. 5 to 515, volume is 790. 515 to 530, volume is 700. 530 to 545, volume is 630. 545 to 6, volume is 570. And finally, 6 to 615, volume is 510. All these things are divided by with an interval of 15 minutes. Fine. Okay. So our question is, what is the peak hourly volume? So how can we find that? 
for one hour time period of 4:15 to do uh, 5:15. What is that? 4:15 to 5:15. That is one hour. Fine. So how the total volume 520 plus 580 plus 670 plus 790. What is the value? 2560. First you have to identify that. Similarly, for all the other one hour time period, what is the maximum number of vehicles or the maximum traffic volume, uh, hourly traffic volume that you have to identify? 4:15 to 5:15. Similarly, 4:30 to 5:30. 580 plus 670 plus 790 plus 700 that you have to identify and similarly 445 to 545 5 to 6 550 to 650 here we can see the subsequent one hour intervals and the traffic volume of these subsequent one hour intervals so from this find out the maximum traffic volume here the maximum traffic volume is 2790 so that is the peak hourly volume so that is what second or uh, second part that is peak hour factor that is a repeated question that we have already mentioned we have already seen the formula of that and we will see how it is calculated we now know what is the peak 60 minute traffic that we have already identified right 2790 vehicles per hour that is the peak 60 minute traffic divided by 4 How we got the four sixty divided by fifteen? Uh, um, uh, we already know that we divided by four into v fifteen is the formula for peak hour factor for fifteen minutes. So that's it. And uh, next is what is the fifteen minute peak of this uh, traffic? So here, which is the this is for fifteen minutes. This is for sixty minutes. We have identified the sixty minutes peak and put it in the numerator. And this is for fifteen uh, minutes traffic, and we have to identify the maximum traffic here. Which one is the maximum value here? Here, the maximum value is this seven ninety. So here, the seven ninety has to be put under uh, put in the uh, for B fifteen value. So two seven ninety divided by this four value, we got it like sixty divided by fifty. If it is asked for twenty peak twenty minutes traffic, then we have to give it like sixty divided by twenty. Anyways, for normally they ask for fifteen minutes, so you can buy hard this four four value, uh, the value four. So two seven ninety divided by four into seven ninety, we get the answer as point eight eight three. Fine. So that is how peak out factor is calculated. Question number seven, and next is question number eight and nine. So design horizontal for design of the horizontal and vertical elements, super elevation, side distance, and grades. It is worst affected by option A, width of the vehicle; option B, length of the vehicle; option C, height of the vehicle; option D, speed of the vehicle. Why we have started the session itself? We have mentioned that I have mentioned that the most important parameter is speed of the vehicle. So it is the worst, which is the worst affected characteristic. That is the speed of the vehicle. Which is the most important characteristic. That is the speed of the vehicle. So the answer is option D. That is the speed of the vehicle. Okay. And uh, the next thing in highway work, grade is usually given in uh, one is percentage, two is elevation, see three is uh, degrees, and four is slope. So which one is the normally the grade is given in percentages for highways. So these are the questions eight and nine. Next is question number ten. So in an ascending um, gradient of one in fifty meets a descending gradient of one in fifty, the length of the summit curve for a stopping site distance of eighty meters will be option A zero, option B sixty meters, option C is eight eighty uh, meters, and option D is fifty meters. So here, this is actually a tricky question. Here what it is is. For uh, gradients, for gradients, this uh, length of the summit curve is what is they have asked. We have to assume one thing at first itself. We have to assume like if length is greater than stopping site distance, we have to choose this formula. That is L is equal to n into s square divided by four point four. What is n? Here the slopes are given. Ascending grade one in fifty. Descending grade in one in The end is actually one uh, one in fifty. The difference between these slopes: one is ascending and next one is descending. So one by fifty minus minus one by fifty. So it is like one by fifty plus one by fifty. The answer will be point four. 
and uh, point zero four. So that is the end. Then into s square. S is the stopping side distance, and here it is given. It is given as eighty meters. So point zero four into eighty into eighty divided by four point four. We get the answer as fifty eight, approximately sixty. Let it uh, let it be sixty. So here our initial uh, assumption was L is greater than S S T. Here we can see that. 60 or 58, whatever it is, it is not greater than the SST given in the question. That is 80 meters. So it is not the right answer. So we have to um, choose the second option. That is, as assume L is less than S. The formula is different. L is equal to 2s minus 4.4 divided by n. Substitute the values. 2 into 80 minus 4.4 divided by n. As we have already mentioned, it is 0.04. The answer is 50. So hence the correct answer here is fifty. See the answer. Both these answers are there in the option length. Sixty meter is there. Again, fifty meter is there. If we are not checking these condition properly, then there are there is a high chance that you will choose the wrong option here. So here the answer is actually fifty meters. So you have to check all the conditions. You have to thorough with. You have to be thorough with all the previous year question papers so that you can um, find the correct answer. So these ten questions are from the most recent examination. And next, we'll also cover some of the previous year question paper questions as well. Maybe like five questions, and that's all. So question number eleven: <clears throat> The speed on a road in Doha is sixty meters per hour. And the density estimated is 16 vphpl. What is vphpl? Vehicles per hour per lane. That is vphpl. The approximate flow rate on that section. It is a very simple question. Flow rate means speed into density. We have given they are, they have given both these um, values. Just substitute 16 into 16. We will get it as 960 vphpl. Vphpl is vehicles per hour per lane. Directly option C. So this is a very simple question. This is uh, this uh, they have asked it once. Next is ask the recommended perception and reaction time for stopping side distance. While we have discussed the stopping side distance problem itself, we have uh, it was it was mentioned like if this um, reaction time is not provided, choose it as option C. Well, no, I mean choose it as two point five seconds. So here the it is actually option C. 2.5 seconds. So whenever, even in the problems, if they are they have not specified the reaction time, you have to choose it as 2.5 seconds. Okay. So here the right option is option C. Next is a uh, ruling gradient. Next is a problem for ruling gradient. If ruling gradient is 1 in 20, and there is also a horizontal curve of radius 76 meters, then the compensated gradient should be. So. First, we have to find um, know the formula for compensated gradient. Compensated gradient is equal to ruling gradient minus maximum limit of grade compensation. And what is the maximum limit of grade compensation? You have to know another formula that is seventy five divided by radius of the horizontal curve. <clears throat> okay. So first, find out seventy five divided by radius of the horizontal curve. Here they have given the radius of the horizontal curve as seventy six meters. So Maximum limit of grade compensation is seventy-five divided by seventy-six, and then ruling gradient is um, ruling gradient minus maximum limit of grade compensation has to be done. Here the ruling gradient it is given as one in twenty, but the answer is given as per in percentage. So you have to first convert it into percentage. One divided by twenty into hundred minus seventy-five divided by seventy-six. The answer is four percentage. That is option B. Fine. Next is. If the average center to center spacing of vehicles is 20 meters, then the basic capacity of a traffic lane at the speed of 50 km per hour is. So for this, the basic capacity is formula we have to know. C is equal to 1000 V divided by S. Here V is the design speed. It is given as 50 km per hour, <clears throat> and S is the stopping side distance. Uh, no, center to center distance between the vehicles. It is also provided. So direct sub substitution. Basic capacity is equal to 1000 V divided by S. We have given given with all the parameters values of all the parameters. That is 1000 into 50 divided by 20. Just substitute directly, and we will get the answer as two thousand five hundred. That is option C. That is two thousand five hundred vehicles per hour. Next is camber in the road is provided for 
option A, effective draining, option B, counteracting the centrifugal force, option C, having proper size, option D, of the so you have to choose. So you know what, a, what the camber is. We have discussed. I think you remember what the camber is. So the slope provided on either side. So the payment for drainage purposes. We have discussed for rainfall areas, uh, for the uh, rainfall and all of it is and problems will be there. So that's what is camber. So it is for, provided for effective drainage. And for counteracting the centrifugal force, what is provided? The uh, counteracting the centrifugal force, we, uh, they will be provided with super elevation. Super elevation is also known as cant. So you shouldn't confuse the two words, um, con confuse with these two words, camber and cant. They may ask what is um, uh, what is provided for, um, uh, uh, cant is, cant in the ro road is provided for what purpose? They may ask like that also. So always check what it is. Uh, just be familiar with all the terms and then only you can uh, identify the right option here. So. Here, the answer is option A, that is effective drainage. So that's it. And we have actually covered the most of the um, most of the things which we'll be discussing in our upcoming sessions. First, the geometry characteristics, then the uh, traffic characteristics, and then the transportation planning characteristics, and then finally the payment materials and some of the previous year questions, the most recent pre uh, previous question, and also the some of the previous year questions, the questions are also discussed here. And if you have any queries you can reach us by uh, uh, this phone number uh, 770-96396 and email us at info at skillexplore.com and our website is also provided here the site address is www.skillexplore.com and thank you if you have any queries you can ask now Length of the course is actually according to the our syllabus itself. We will be covering almost all the portions from your syllabus. It will be like we will be having mostly like two to three hours class for each subjects maybe. And yeah, we will be covering the complete uh, uh, amount of uh, syllabus and also we will be discussing our uh, previous questions as well. And the mock test will also be there. Particular experts for each of the subjects will be handling these uh, subjects. Yeah, it will be like um, 2.5 to 3 hours for each subject, maybe there. All these details will be available and we'll be giving details. You uh, actually email us at info at skillexplore.com and we will be giving given with uh, more idea about the passing, passing score and uh, these uh, weightages and all these things. The general idea will be provided uh, if you are asking through info at skillexplore.com. Yes, yes. We have covered this uh, basic questions for uh, traffic engineering alone. So traffic and uh, transportation um, engineering courses alone. This is just the area which I am concentrated on. And, and I am dealing with your traffic and transportation engineering uh, session and maybe construction material session. So I will be dealing with these areas. So, so that's why I have concentrated on this area alone now. So similarly, the other records will be there 
and they'll be um, they'll be giving you more idea about the, the area in which they are specialized in. I am actually doing research in trans traffic and transportation engineering, and that's why I have focused this. My major in MTech is uh, geoinformatics, and currently I am um, specializing in traffic and transportation, actually mainly in transportation engineering area, and that's why I'll be dealing with these things and also construction materials mostly I'll be dealing. So that's why I have covered this area, and I am more interested in this area and also i am more no, i have more knowledge in this area that's why i have chosen similarly other experts will be there and they will be explaining you in more detailed way about the other subjects as well okay hope uh, i hope that you have uh, got the general idea about the traffic and transportation in here and hope satisfied.